this video, I'll show you how to perform the Wilcoxon signed rank test by hand. The Wilcoxon signed rank test is a non-parametric test to compare data. Non-parametric usually means you know the population data doesn't have a normal distribution. The test should be used if the differences between pairs of data are non-normally distributed. There are two versions of the test. The basic test compares the sample median to a hypothetical one. The matched pairs test computes the difference between each set of matched pairs. Then it follows the same procedure as the basic test. The term Wilcoxon is often used for either test. This usually isn't confusing as it should be obvious if the data is matched or not matched. The null hypothesis is that the medians of the two samples are equal. It's generally used as a non-parametric alternative to the one sample or paired t-tests or for ordered categorical variables without a numerical scale. Here are the requirements for running the test. Data must be matched. The dependent variable must be continuous. In other words, you must be able to distinguish between values at the nth decimal place. Finally, there shouldn't be any tied ranks for maximum accuracy. Let's look at an example. Is there a difference between medium values for this treatment data for 12 groups? Step 1. Subtract treatment 2 from treatment 1 to get the differences. For example, 4.0 minus 2.5 is 1.5. The next step is to place those differences in order. We're going to rank them, ignoring the sign when placing in rank order. Next, we make a third column and note the sign. This is the sign of the difference, the one we ignored in the previous step. For example, that sign of 0.1 was negative. The next steps calculate the sums. We're going to calculate W minus first. This is the sum of those negative ranks. You're adding the ranks here, not the differences. So my W minus is going to be 7. I do a similar thing to find my W plus. If I add up all of my positives, I get 71. We're going to use the smallest W as our test statistic. That was 7. Next, we need to look up a critical value. Let's say we're running this at 5% alpha level. If we look at n equals 12 at a 5% alpha level and a two-tailed test, it was two-tailed because no direction was specified, we get a critical value of 13. Our test statistic was smaller than the critical value, so we can reject the null hypothesis that the medians were equal. If you have a large sample, you're not going to find that in the table, so we can use a normal approximation. If this amount is greater than 20, we can use a normal approximation. Our set of 12 data points actually does meet this requirement, so let's go ahead and calculate a z-score. Here's our z-score formula. The x, our test statistic, is going to be the smaller of the w values again. That was 7. And here are the formulas for the mean and the standard deviation. We do have one tied rank, so we're going to have to use this formula to reduce sigma. That means we're going to reduce sigma by 0.125. Plugging those numbers into our z-score formula, we get 2.51. If we look in a z-table for 2.5 in the column and 0.01 in the row, we get 0.99396. That's equal to a two-tailed p-value of 1 minus 0.99396 or 0 0.00604. That small p-value tells us the medians are significantly different and we can reject the null hypothesis that the medians are equal. I hope you found the video helpful. Please take a moment to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.